What a range of automobiles. I mean, you've got the Williams, Tyrrells, March, Shadows, Arrows, Penske, Lotus, McLaren. Fantastic Formula One field at the Rolex Monterey Motorsports Reunion. In 2010, we ran the car at Laguna Seca for the Monterey Historics. We had qualified, and Sunday on race day, we started the car and we're warming it up, and we're about ready to move out onto the track when suddenly the motor stopped. <laughs> Tried to start it again, and nothing worked. My mechanic looked at me and shrugged his shoulders and said the only thing that would stop it that quickly was that the timing belt broke. So we rolled the car back in the garage and that was the end of our weekend in 2010. We're just lucky that it happened in the garage. So in the spring of 2000, 11, we rebuilt the motor, took it out to Willow Springs for the testing. It turned out that it wasn't the belt after all, so that was the cause of the problem. <laughs> the car ran perfectly for a few minutes and then died. Checked out everything started it up again, ran out, ran for a few minutes and died. This went on all day, at least six hours in the hot sun. Finally, we checked the battery and put a new old battery that we had in it, and it ran well. We thought, that's the battery. So we went home happy. The car ran a few laps and ran beautifully. Back at Laguna in 2011, with high hopes and confidence that we'd solved all the problems, we broke down again on the track, and they towed the car into the garage. Well, we're getting ready to do another test. It looks like the crank trigger is getting intermittent on us. So we've got a couple things we can check here, try to make it fail again, and see if we can reproduce that error. And if we can, then we're going to go ahead and pull the engine out and replace that crank trigger. <laughs> What time is it? It must be about 10.30 and we've already got the engine out and we've, uh, we're have we just putting the new uh, trigger on the uh, crank. What it does is it, as the piece rolls past here, the magnet, it signals this thing to signal the box. That's all it does. No magic here. It's just simple. that easy and that simple. And after, what, six hours of effort, they found out that it was a crank trigger that had caused the problem. Phil Riley was there, we bought one from him and installed it and the car ran fine. So we finally got to the problem. Well, if it runs for more than about five minutes, we're good to go. Glad to be here, my crew is showing up one by one. Oh, of that course, I could have told you that. That was causing all the trouble. This is one tagger. <laughs> if Chuck fails at the driving if test, I'm if, going to take over. I'm going to show him how to drive this thing. And I probably will fail miserably. 
<laughs> this is a great day, beautiful weather. Looks like a day to win. This is from Richmond 3 Z. Let's Von Newman car. We were running out to qualify, but I had a feeling that no one had tested the coolant cap. And the car ran a few laps on the track and then we saw a black flag go up. It was my car, which had overheated and was dumping fluid on the track because the cap was not tight and had fallen off. So it turned out that my instincts were correct. So we towed the car in to find out how severely damaged it was because the car was almost out of fluid when they brought it back and because I had put it up for auction and uh, I wasn't going to put the car through the auction if I thought that there had been damage to it. But on further checking, the car was fine. On Friday, a man named John Goodman from Seattle had blown up his Ferrari Formula One car and had come over to the garage to look at it. He said, yeah, I'm seriously interested in the car because uh, I've blown up mine and I'll, I want a car for Sunday. And I said, well, I put a high reserve on it. He says, well, we'll see what happens. Welcome back live to Mika Monterey here on HD Theater. A pleasure to have you with us on this Saturday from wherever you're watching. Been a lot of fun here the last couple of days, last three days with motorcycles on Thursday, high-end cars, and boy, we've seen some ultra high-end cars today, John. We're going to see more. Well, that uh, Impala is rolling away. Keep an eye on it. Post block. It's still working it. Yes, uh, the bid goes on, but keep an eye on it. <laughs> hey, look at this. Uh, eight, while we keep an eye on that one, out of the corner of our eye, uh, the camera is uh, focused on a 1980 McLaren Formula One Grand Prix race car. I had put a very high reserve on the car for $350,000. This one was actually driven by Alain Prost in his rookie year on the F1 circuit. I wasn't going to sell the car because I really didn't want to sell it. What I find really special about this car, first of all, it is so refreshing to see it in Marlboro colors. I don't remember what year it was that busy body politicians decided that they would start deciding you couldn't participate in certain sports. But it's been a lot of years. I mean, that, that, that was an icon in this sport for, for over a decade. Secondly, just as Scott said a couple of minutes ago, in 1979, do you have any idea? Think back for a moment what a highly valued asset Alain Cross was supposed to be. He had just come off winning four straight championships, two of which won Formula 3. He won both the French Championship and the European Championship in 1979. And McLaren actually offered him a ride at the end of 1979. What was the last race that year? The United States Grand Prix at Watkins Glen. And I was up there with the car as the owner. And I don't remember how many bids there were, but there was this man sitting in the, uh, the second row with a, with a cell phone to his ear, and he... I don't remember how competitive the bidding was, but he got it up to $300,000.
And I was sitting there saying, uh-oh. And then it went flat. And I said, I'm not going to take, said to myself, I'm not going to take $300,000 for it. But I'm going to try a ploy here. And a crowd like that, when it goes to $300,000, they get pretty excited. And there was a big crowd, and it was pretty exciting. And I was up there in front of the crowd. I felt like a celebrity, temporarily. And so I said into the microphone, I have a custom-built trailer for this car with a lot of tools and stuff in it. Go to 325 and I'll throw in the trailer. And I noticed the guy on the cell phone again and he nodded his head and raised his hand. 325 he offered. Going once, going twice, sold. Get the shirt and hat is there anything else that we want to throw in there? How about this hat? Get the tag along. Let's sell it, Jimmy. Let's sell it. I'll tell you, this is an eminently more drivable car. An average race car driver could pop them up and drive it the same day. Sold. And there was a thunderous applause, and I was pretty thrilled at the time. More more with the crowds looking at me than the money, to tell you the truth. <laughs> it was really fun for me. That's a hardcore deal breaking, back to back. Absolutely, there's the car that sells for three and a quarter, the number four seller of the auction in Monterey. We will come I felt very bad for my driver and crew who had put all this work and effort and skill into making their car competitive. So I decided to see if they'd be interested in running my uh, John Player special that Nigel Mansell drove for Lotus in 1984. And they were pretty excited about the prospect. It is a very well-known car around the world. I sent the car out to Tehachapi, to Dean Sellers' shop. We had already rebuilt the engine, so there's not much to do to it, but I had to make that competitive so we could run exhibition laps. It's a turbocharged car, so we can't race it. We're gonna spend two or three days at Willow this spring testing the car, and that'll be a fun time. As you can hear in the background, the car is leaving start finish to begin their first of two pace laps. Well, and they're all Cosworth powered, with the exception, of course, of the Ferrari, because uh, Cosworth powered just about everything in Formula One. If you didn't build your own engine, you bought a Cosworth.